we had a fox attack, guys, this week. Luke and Dirk had just gone in to have lunch, and me and Molly and all the animals were out on the bottom of our land, just chilling, playing, eating. And all of a sudden, we heard a huge scream. What happened, Molly? Okay, the rain is starting and I just want to see what's going on with Molly because she hasn't come back yet. Girls, look at the mossy. Oh my goodness, you're loving that, eh? It's like after a few days of rain, even a few hours of rain, it hydrates. It was all dead. I mean, it looked dead anyway. And now they're loving it. That was something bad. So a fox attack. And it's a crazy time for a fox attack because it's the afternoon. It's crazy, it's like two in the afternoon. Molly, did you help daddy? You're clever, you went when he shouted. You're very clever. You're very clever, come. Come, let's go and find the chuckies. Come on. I was having my lunch and I heard a big <laughs> I ran out and uh, I saw Sunny sprinting. And then I found her in that black uh, old milk pot that's a plant pot over there. She's amazing. Um, and I saw two <laughs> white ones, I don't know their names, fly. But yeah, he had some white feathers in his mouth and then he ran up the hill. Then Molly came to the rescue and chased him off. And now and we're, we're missing, we're missing seven, Tiny 2. Eight, two, two chickens. Tiny 2 for sure. Tiny 2 and someone else. And Tiny 2 is very, very scared of everything. So chances are she's good as well. So if we can do the count and find nine hens, I'll be happy. <coughs> Maggie, we missed the fox attack. <coughs> they all found their little place to hide. There was Tiny 2 who we couldn't find for the next hour or so afterwards, but she was just being super cautious and she came out when she knew she was safe. So it was the best outcome we could have had. Does this look like a chicken who's just been attacked by a fox? She really is the boss, Sunny Ace. Eh? Go. Uh, Clever girl. Okay, go. You don't want to go out. Go on, go, go, go. Molly is on fox duty, eh, Molly? Go. Go on. <laughs> she doesn't want to go. One, two, three, go. What do we do if we see a foxy? We say, get out of here! Get out of here, foxy! <laughs> foxy, get out of here! <laughs> foxy, get out of here! Good girl, good girl, you do that, okay? You protect the chuckies. Luke, where are you going? Hello. Um, <laughs> it's been raining all day and we think we have about an hour's chance me and Dirk to go and stake out the border that we didn't know was ours. What do you mean stake out though? <laughs> uh, shit, I was feeling like all right, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I can't reach my stakes. No. Uh, can you pass me one? Is my bag opening? It's open, yeah. But are they going to fall out? No. Okay. I'll have one handy just in case. <laughs> Go get those vampires, Molly! Get out of here, vampires! <laughs> you get them, vampires! There he is, the sick man. Yep. And Buffy, Buffy the vampire slayer is ready. Yeah. yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> yep. Let's kill them all. Let's kill them all. Oh, the... oh shit, look who's oh, coming no, with us. Oh no, look who's coming with Where are you, you Pam? Oh, will... They're like, we sense adventure, guys. Got something to ram them into the hearts of the I'll vampires. I'll tell you who I'm gonna ram them into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the spray. With your fist. And a hammer. And the okay. hammer. He's a good uh, assistant, sir. So. You gonna take the pigs with you? <laughs> yeah. Take the pigs with you is like a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> Hope they come with you. <laughs> this is our border. 
This is this a super head deck. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later, sir. We're gonna go. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye, Maggie. Bye, Peppa. Oh, yeah. yeah, still spot on. But according to the cadaster, straight on and then a little bit to the left. Really? Yeah. Ah, at the very top, I see. At the top there, and then go to the left, then straight on. Yeah, there's a wall, I think, the whole way, pretty much. Yeah, this one is spot on. So what do you see on your screen there, Dirk? Will it yeah? show on the camera? Maybe. No, it's reflecting. Sorry, guys, I tried. Yeah. I'll take one on this one. Cool. Got it. Another core coke we have, we didn't know we had. Another molly poppy we didn't know we had. <laughs> she probably already knows the border better than Oh, me. and how? And I need mean, here, I've never been. Yeah. Here, this one. That's the cornerstone. Yeah. Indeed. Neighbors land, our land. <laughs> Beautifully kept. That's so beautiful this place. This is where Timmy got stuck. Yeah, in the trap. Uh -huh. Second Timmy trap. I say Timmy trap for those of you that don't know. Timmy had gotten stuck caught in one of these and we didn't see him for two days and then Sarah came and found him and he was barely alive it looks pretty dense in here eh but there's a lot of cork oaks the point. No one's spot on okay I'll take one over here so this is our corner one. I, I, I think I'll put one down in the soil here. Yeah. So I remember, I'll put a stake down well, there. Actually, this tree is already a nice reference point, but... Yeah, okay, the cork oak. Yeah, but look, always take into account, I'm following the line from the cast. Uh -huh. And these things can also be off, because even that, I was off like a meter and a half. So that it, you know you're in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not like really, really... Uh, but I'm, but I think that stone is a nice reference, eh? so yeah. Uh -huh. And now we actually have to go down, eh? Yeah. Yep. But we had a path, and I think that's why it might be the natural... Somewhere here. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, now we have to go straight down. Yeah, from down. here. Yeah. Yeah, when you hit oil, you can stop it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Basically, so it's, just, it's, it's going ten. like that. Then. No, it's two tangents going down straight. Eh? So. Yeah. Okay, I found a stone. So we're in line with the last stake we put. So it looks like it's pretty right. And there's an old hunting sign here as well. Ding. Yeah, which used to be here. That's a stone that's put there with, by Purposely, yeah. human hand, eh? Yeah. Hopefully. And they always use long thin ones, eh, it seems. Yeah. Well, you see what I told you is quite it's, it's not in the same alignment because if from the cadaster it's over there. Really? Yeah, so if you have this point, eh? Now we go to the cadaster line. Well it's kind of okay. It's over here. This one. Okay, so it's a good one, two, three, four meters off. Yeah, but again, that means that the line from the cadaster is not correct. Yeah, yeah. That is correct. So take this as a legal point. Exactly. And yeah. then we work off that. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So now you can just go parallel to the line that you have of the cadaster. Yeah, sure. You I know what I mean? Line, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just make staking points. Oh. Because at least that is a agreed upon definite border, right? Yeah. So the well, owner of this land is comfortable with that. I mean, because mm. it's been here since he's been here, I guess. Or he put it in. 
You never know who put it in here, huh? Or maybe somebody moved it from there to here. He could have done that, he could have done that. In Belgium they do it a lot, eh? the farmers. Uh -huh. It's the first thing they do. <laughs> <laughs> because in Belgium we also have a BS pile, they call them. Eh? So, uh, and that's concrete stakes they put in there. And the first thing they do with the, the tractor is like... Whoops! <laughs> I'll like put it feet. back, wasn't it oh, over here? I didn't see it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they have like a <laughs> few acres more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so these are the terraces I cleared this winter. So it's just one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve meters off what I thought it was on this side. So we have all this green mush to clear. <laughs> we'll be doing that this winter, that's for sure. I can't wait because there's so many cork oaks. It's really going to be beautiful up here. Well, according to the cadastre, uh -huh. that's uh, the corner of your property, eh? so this one. So uh, this point, well, I actually can go back a little bit, but yeah, of course the road. Hey, the road is my <laughs> <laughs> So good to you. So over here, now you go oh, indeed, yeah, to over there. So here I put a point, I might as well. I'll yeah. put it a, a meter in. Hello. Yeah? Yep. So there I put one. Yeah. Okay, we're trying to get to one of the corner points. It's right in the middle of this bush. Good. <laughs> Go for it. Jump. <laughs> How many meters from there? I can't. Uh, I can't oh, you can't tell, eh, uh, like that. But I'll take a point here. And afterwards, I can triangulate it eh, from the stakes we already uh, taken. And then we know plus minus where it is. Eh? Can you get, just get the outside line before the corner? Uh, that's a technique. Yeah? We take uh, two stacking poles, triangulate it to the one we're going to put now. Then I give you the theoretical point, and then I give you the two distances from those two uh, stacking okay. poles. Okay. And then. So when I'm streaming. This is hopefully <laughs> gone. You're okay. Yeah? Okay, so I have more brambles. Yeah. Yay! Oh, Streamers, <laughs> here we come. So tell me where to stake then. Yeah, one sec. Oh, first I'm going. Try to find the closest point without feeling uh, like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, why like Jesus? Oh, the, the crown of thorns. <laughs> <laughs> so tricks of the trade. If you can't get to a point, there's a way around it. <laughs> Triangulation. Yeah. Triangulation. Oh, I want to get one as as close as possible. I uh, will perpendicularly to the point that's actually over there. Yeah, but you still have to find your staking poles. Eh? I can actually measure that tree, so that's not never gonna move. That's a reference point. Okay. And then put the stake over there. And then I can give you the distances. Okay. And then to the the other one. To the to the corner point. Very good. Uh, so he's gonna, the tree is gonna, always going to be there, hopefully, unless someone cuts it down. Yeah, because it's not your property. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to be sure. Yeah. yeah. So he'll have that point of the tree. He'll tell me to put another point somewhere there. And then he'll give me the distances between them to triangulate the center point somewhere in there. That's good enough. Yep. I'll be back with a proper <laughs> hammer. Okay, Luke, so when you measure, you have to measure from this side of the tree. No? Yeah. 
If only property borders were that accurate. <laughs> when I triangulate that spot, you it goes to, up to the olive grove there. All the way straight. Straight. Yeah. Ah, okay, so we're ready. And then it goes to the, the one the we one. staked then to the road and then straight down to the river. Okay. Yeah. Got it all staked out, so at least now we know the one border that we weren't exactly sure where the exact line is, and that was because it was full of brambles. Thanks, Dick. Yep, you're That's welcome. That's the last of your surveying <laughs> while you're here, I think, eh? I assume so, yeah. Staking nice out to the border now, and then I finish with surveying, yeah. Nice. Alrighty, let's get back. Looks pretty good, eh, this? No? Yeah, indeed. That's cool. Who's moaning? All of you? What? What's wrong, Susie? What? Tell me. Speak English. <laughs> oh, she's it's growing, yeah, Alfie. Seven. Okay, we cool. The data. Nice one. I'll see you later. See you. Bye, guys. It came back to life. But there's so many aloe veras. Now this plant has been through hell. It was dying come winter time because it was too cold. I took it inside and it was doing well. Then I got it outside abruptly without any warning and it went into shock and got sunburned and turned white. Two weeks later though, thanks to a bunch of you guys, it's doing really well and it's nice and green. And what I'm gonna do is take off the dead leaves and separate it because there's just so many aloe veras in here. So, I was thinking, because this pot is is a little bit of, of a mess, I think I'll just break the pot so I don't ruin the roots. Oh, a big one for it. There were way too many living in the same space. Oh my goodness. Ooh, beautiful. The upside down aloe technique. <laughs> Oppa. Okay, very good. Wow. Wow, okay, that's good. Look at it all coming apart. Very good. I'm very happy with this. Wow. Okay, as you can see, I have ended up with a bunch of aloe vera, but it's not going to be as easy as I thought. Because they were squashed in that pot, they are all growing like this. Now, this is not very good. Because they're already top heavy, they're already bending, so I have to do something about it. So, unfortunately, even though they have the roots, I'm going to have to cut them. I have watched that you can cut them and let them callus over and then plant them. So that is what I'm going to do today. Okay, so Operation Aloe Vera. We are only going to keep the middle bit, I think. Let's try with one. You know, this is just a test. Okay. So I cut it, I peel off the ones I don't need. How it comes out. And I'll leave that to callus over and then I will plant it. Okay, so I'm still going to keep, this is too long, so I'm going to keep only that and cut it. Okay, <laughs> what if I just keep the roots? Will something happen? We'll, we'll do the test as well. This is going to be a test. If you just cut a tear like this the layer will come off peel it like an onion what if i just tear it it will survive right let's see one two okay i don't know if i'm doing the right thing here let me know if i did this really wrong but i just cut all the dead bits and left the nice juicy ones because if i did cut all the way till the end I'll end up with nothing. So like this, I can replant it and see how it goes. So 
So this is what I know about aloe vera and I can share it with you guys. They are top heavy, so if they're leaning, it's not good. You should cut them down and grow them straight. So the way I found them, it wasn't gonna go well. So I might as well experiment with this and hope for the best. Also, they don't like very wet soil, so they need good draining soil. And it's really good to plant them in like a terracotta pot because it dries up much faster. And I know they're easy to propagate, so hopefully this little experiment will work well. I'm gonna leave them to callus over over here. And hopefully I'll keep you updated. I'm gonna try also like this. Because I know I've I've watched this somewhere that it works. Wow, it's already closing, look. I only did it yesterday. So I think it's gonna be okay. And then the new growth will grow from here. I feel hopeful. This is one of my favorite places on the land, but today I am visiting it as a tourist. <laughs> and I will tell you why in a minute. Now many of you have seen boulders up here before because we just pass it very often on the walks. But today I'm taking my time to explore it a little bit. I think it's the right time to mention our sponsor Skillshare because we're at a beautiful place and I'm gonna do one of my projects that I have from one of the courses that I'm taking on Skillshare. For those of you who don't know what Skillshare is, well, they are an online learning community for creatives just like you and me. Where millions of people come together to take that next step on their learning journey. Sometimes I can't believe we live in such an amazing place. It's ours, but it's hard work. And to get here has been no joke. And it is pretty hard when the only wage you have is YouTube and it's very up and down. So I am exploring new possibilities and I'm letting Skillshare help me out with that. In this year, 2023, I have three goals. One is to reach financial stability because it's always at the back of our mind. Will we get enough views to have enough money to feed the animals? You know, this is constantly playing on our mind all the time and it would be amazing if we didn't have it. We could relax more and work on more important things. Number two, I want and I need to explore my creative and career options. And there are hundreds of career focused classes. And I wanna continue being my own boss. It's very easy to say, yes, let's set up something that's gonna get us passive income, but it's going to take a while to find out what that is and what path to take to reach it. I always think that no dream is too big and always go after it. But sometimes, like probably everyone else who's watching this, I stop because I'm worried about what people might think. Will I manage this? Will I succeed? Will I fail? But these silly voices inside our heads should be banished. And I'm taking a really good course by Lucy Lumbrix to help you with this inner critic of yours to tell it to stop doing that. And you are better than what they think. Does this sound familiar to you guys? Because it does to me. There's so many times I'm not very confident, even though you might think I am in front of the camera. I am not. I'm just very good at editing these awkward moments out. But I have voices in my head all the time telling me, OK, don't do that. Don't post that. They're not going to like it. They're going to say something bad about it. And if I really feel like I should share it, then I should share it. And this is where Lucy goes in her class. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. But I'm also doing another course by her for photography. I'm not that into photography. I more take videos and stuff, but I'm really enjoying it. She's like right now on the way down from Boulder City, I did one of the um, projects she told me to do. And I looked through Boulder City 
as a tourist and I loved it. I passed through some little cracks, I looked up the walls and the trees and I took my time to pass. Normally I pass really fast from there even though I love looking at it but I look at it from a distance if you know what I mean. If you want to check out some of the photos that I took you can head on down to our Instagram. <laughs> So if you want to go in the direction I want to go in and the 9 to 5 is not for you anymore and you want to explore new possibilities, then Skillshare might be the thing for you. So I have put a link in the description below and if you click on that link, not only will you be able to see the course that I recommended, but you will be able to explore the Skillshare library completely free for one whole month. The first 1000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Wouldn't it be amazing if you can find something that you really love doing? instead of doing something maybe you have a job that you hate going to every day so Skillshare can be that new beginning for you so go on click on that link you know you want to with all this walking and talking and taking photos I have really worked up an appetite <laughs> this is the last pizza of the day. Thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Voilà, maar voor de goede doe ik het met plezier. Dan ga ik gewoon zeggen.